Okay, let, let's start by an easy question. <laughs> Can you present yourself and, and, and say who you are and where you are? I'm definitely not going to be doing any background on myself. I don't do that in interviews. I've done it no, 3,000 no. times and I'm done with that. But That's I'm in sure, Bali, sure, Indonesia. Sure. I'm in, ba in Bali, Indonesia, and um, happy to, to talk about um, the great uh, awakening and about how we are, each of us, awakening within this, uh, this dream spell. That is essentially what is happening and that's where i'm comfortable uh, speaking about the mechanics of awakening how we challenge uh, the status quo uh, how we uh, take uh, power so to speak uh, from the imposed fiction and the so-called authorities which have no mandate have no power they're not even real it's a parent corporation it's acting in the realm of the unconscious it started to kill humanity it started to tell us it's trying to stick injections into the arms of seven billion souls because that is what happens when you don't pay attention and when you surrender your consciousness over multiple generations and incarnations so we've arrived at the perfect storm of our own ignorance in that sense do you see yourself as a digital warrior how do you how do you see yourself digital warrior I've, uh, I, I scarcely know how to open a computer or tap in a message on an, on an iPhone. So definitely I'm not one of them, um, but I, I am a, a pundit. Um, I, I'm, I have a great deal of experience um, in understanding the machinations of evil in this world at the multilateral governance level, at the level of uh, political and uh, diplomatic um, intervention in human affairs. Um, I have a fair understanding of history and cosmogenesis, and I have absolute clarity on what's happening right now. Do you think people will finally realize that they have to trust their own authority, or will they always go towards exterior authorities? Well, that's, that's always been the oldest dilemma um, of the human in the human condition um, since our great fall the sep the trial of separation um, has always brought that same dilemma about um, but that is the hero's journey that is why each of us incarnated into this realm of forgetfulness as the ancient Greeks referred to the human condition um, we chose uh, to incarnate into the realm of um, forgetfulness precisely in order uh, to remember ourselves in that forgetful state uh, and rekindle our connection to source and reactivate that Jacob's ladder because the human who actualizes inside this realm of forgetfulness becomes the Jacob's ladder not just for themselves but also through for all of creation in the 3D temporal universe. So the human avatar becomes the Christed principle or the Messiah principle for all realms of expression in the temporal universe, including many of these extraterrestrial uh, and demonic uh, forces that seek to intervene in our ascension. Uh, they are desperate to get back to light and to source themselves. They can only do it by stealing life force and parasiting off the human, which is what has happened for thousands of years. But now, if we enter into our true Christed nature as the superhumans, then we extend the empathic and the compassion, the love, the empathy, the absolution, the redemption. We give that. It's a gift from us to this uh, temporal universe. And we help our brothers and sisters and our fellows find their way home. Uh, I cannot stress enough the importance of the actualized human being, because that is the Christ, that is the Messiah, that is the thing that we are always seeking outside of self, and that is why government crept in to the field of expression. That is how the Catholic Church and all monotheistic religions and even cultures crept in to the field of expression, because humans were seeking externally and extraneously for themselves. Now we can realize our own uh, awakening and our own fulfillment, reconfigure 
that Christ did supernature and take it from here? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things that uh, governments do to uh, detach ourselves from our intuition or our consciousness. Uh, you probably know a little bit about that. What, what, what do you think uh, are the things that detach us from our of our higher level consciousness in this world. Okay, well, I don't know a little bit about it. I'm an encyclopedia on the subject, and I can speak for weeks without stopping as long as I have a bit of water on this subject. So I will try to break it down into a few minutes. Governments gift to us three things. Spells, bonds, and synthetic molecules. The synthetic molecules is the phenomenon of the last century, gifted to us by the Rockefeller dynasty uh, at the extension of the British crown and the Dutch crown and the imperial crowns of Europe, connected to the Vatican complex, especially to the Jesuitical black papacy driving the Roman Catholic Church. All of that satanic and luciferic nonsense gifted to the world the agrochemical industry and the pharmaceutical industry and the mainstream media and academia, which is the dream spell. So we have the spells is connected to marketing, advertising, television, radio, uh, rock and roll concerts, football stadiums, all of that idolatrous nonsense uh, that we sell ourselves. And the bonds come to us through governments. The bonds come to us through registrations and tabulations of lands, registrations of living souls, birth certificates, death certificates and the registrations of all land, all homes, all businesses, all motor cars, everything that you can look at and see and touch that is not natural has been patented, copyrighted, trademarked, bonded on paper, lies, goddamn lies. Okay, so we are caught up in bonds, spells, and synthetic molecules, which is poison. That's the agrochemical and pharmaceutical industries, which uh, their function is to ensure the slow death uh, and misery of billions of human souls in order that we can continue to be the utility for uh, non-sentient uh, or uninsolved beings, intelligences to live vicariously through this plane of existence. So that's the parasite, that's the demonic realms, the lower astral realms, that's the intervention. But the curious thing is that the intervention element, this extraterrestrial so-called ET uh, element, is also part of our cosmogenesis. So the story is very multidimensional, very difficult to break down into a few minutes. The mm -hmm. government essentially is the line in the sand, the controller or the controller mm -hmm. of poisoning, of spells and of bombs against mm -hmm. the living soul the living men and women of the living soil. Great. I believe in a united world, in a united uh, populations. Uh, I don't believe in, in world governance necessarily, uh, but I do believe that people need to be free uh, to self-realize them, themselves. Uh, uh, do you ever see the, the, the um, invention of a, a world uh, uh, government or governance uniting everybody or, or is this just another uh, form of authority that people will will go or will not go towards well it, you're in a sense circling back to an earlier question about um, will people stop seeking externally for governance um, it comes back to the same thing no um, we're not interested in collectivism. We don't want to be collectivized any longer. That has not worked. It's a fail. That is the Borg of the uh, Star Trek. So we don't need to be um, collectivized from any external force or any external intelligence. That's the point. The point is get the fuck out of my face, government. Get the fuck out of my face, Catholic Church and all monotheistic religious constructs. Even culture is not the friend of humanity. Culture is also connected to the circumcision of little boys and little girls, cutting off the foreskin and the clitoris and robbing them from their bliss and from their orgasm. So culture ultimately becomes a perversity in the same way that government is a perversity, in the same way that the Catholic Church is the ultimate perversity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very interesting. I like the way that you... <laughs> You see uh, the world. 
Um, what is your mission? Like, uh, uh, and what got you on this mission? Well, is it to inform or to, um, what's your, what, how do you see your mission? I don't uh, see a mission per se, but I'm certainly involved uh, in a lot of uh, um, initiatives and um, organizations that um, I've set up variously and am um, helping to uh, progress. And all of them are connected to the restoration of natural justice in simple terms, a restoration to natural law, which is God's law, which is also the Adamite law, the law of the first human. I am the first human. I claim this world. It is my world. I claim everything I can see. It's my universe. I take full accountability and responsibility for it. So I don't claim myself to be a victim of the government or of circumstance or of the Catholic Church. But because I own that, I take full responsibility for it. And I will speak to it plainly. Because it is only in speaking to something plainly in pure truth that we can go into reconfiguration with our divine nature. And reconfiguring that divine nature is how we become capacitors of uh, the, the, uh, the universal mind. And then we have limitless power, limitless creativity, and limitless capacity uh, to manifest perfection and patterns of perfection in this world. Starting with our own enlightenment. Again, pure truth, right action in the living moment. That is the gospel, that is the doctrine, that is the living philosophy, that is even the mystical flame. We don't need to get more complicated than that. Everything else is spells and bonds, doctrine, dogma, lie, deception, manipulation. Yeah. So natural law and the reconvention of universal natural law to the sucked up temporal 3D plane is my, uh, my raison d'etre, my, uh, my reason for being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good, I like that. Uh, two more questions for you, okay? Because I really appreciate uh, your time. These questions are a little bit different. Uh, do you believe that the, a new techno technological revolution, like the blockchain revolution or the cryptocurrency revolution, uh, the decentralization revolution uh, will help the world or uh, uh, yet another const construct? Uh, it's it's another indentureship into an abstraction. Uh, this time it's going into such an abstraction that you can't touch it or see it or feel it. But you can certainly uh, feel the effects of it. So crypto uh, by nature is stealth. To be cryptic is not to be honest or to be standing in pure truth. Pure truth doesn't need to be cryptic about anything. So crypto anything is full of shit. Having said that, uh, it is very useful uh, for us to move into the crypto space as part of a mechanism of stepping away from a reality matrix that is absolutely in the control of satanic and luciferic forces. So yes, I love crypto for the reason that a blockchain decentralizes and takes away that centralized command and control. Uh, but for how long? And of course, we all know that the invisible hand, uh, the invisible masters are behind the engineering of uh, Bitcoin and of crypto this and crypto that and blockchain this and blockchain that. But they are hoping to collectivize humanity into a new dream spell using crypto and blockchain. So the pundits and the uh, functionaries within that world who believe themselves to be sovereigns are absolutely lying to themselves. They are just not that consciously evolved. They are still having a, a tea party in a prison cell. So ultimately, if you want to move into enlightenment and emancipation, then stop being cryptic about anything and stand purely under the central sun of pure truth and walk in a straight line and embody and enact and manifest in this world uh, as a true avatar, a son or a daughter of God most high. But do not pretend that we can be emancipated if we are um, encrypting and decrypting reality. So it's a useful function as we transition from a fully fictitious reality of indentureship and enslavement into a new paradigm 
I just hope that my brothers and sisters uh, will join me in seeing the false light of crypto. Having said that, I'm also planning on launching a crypto coin later this year because I see that it is a necessary or a relevant intermediary function. But I will be the first to speak against it as a permanent um, as a permanent uh, uh, arrangement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I get, I get you. Uh, power centralizes all the time and. I think we've been able to wake up because of decentralized communication, such as the internet. Yeah. I, I Bravo. Think it's a necessary, a necessary step uh, to decentralize our money at this point, uh, and it's kind of a, like a check and balance for the forces that want to centralize power again. Um, I think it's a transitionary period. For how long, I don't know, but uh, we'll have to see. <laughs> Daniel, can I can I take this can I take this further, please? Okay, so, so it's not so much that um, we, we have to recognize first the, the false light jurisdiction um, of money altogether. So the idea of a crypto coin or a, the coin of Caesar is still the same quanta. It's still the same thing. In a sense, it is still false light adherence to the value of time and motion and life force of the living souls. So we are still putting our time, our motion, our life force into coin or a crypto coin, a token representing. What bullshit is that? Think about it. Ultimately, creative ideas, our capacity to love and be loved, our, our life force moving into the soil and, and building and designing and engineering beautiful solutions and beautiful harmonic spaces and terraforming this world and other worlds, invoking Merkaba and, and deploying advanced uh, technologies that can remediate all of the mutant frequencies of the synthetic molecules that have destabilized our world, and bringing us back into full redemption of the living biosphere. That's where we all should be putting our time, our motion, and our life force, not into aggregating or securitizing or monetizing ourselves and our ideas into tokens that we then exchange with one another. So I'm saying that ultimately any idea of economics at all is indentureship into false light. Let's be clear about that. Mm -hmm. But we're a long way from that because uh, what, what solutions are there left? Barter? Uh, or unless we just live from, from, from nature and we don't monetize, yes. we don't put an economic no, we anywhere. don't. We can do that. Daniel, we can do that. We can send rocket ships to uh, Neptune. We can send rocket ships to the Pleiades, okay? We have the technology even now for replicator science. Uh, we know how to fire up and power up uh, a free energy uh, systems, but they are prohibited from getting into the marketplace because of copyrights, because of compliance regulations, because of statutory lies and deceptions backed up by police, backed up by military, backed up by rigged judicial systems and, and crooked legislatures and fucking governments. So the problem is all of that apparatus that is empowered through money and economics is standing in the way of that new earth vision that I'm talking about. So which yeah. do we want? Do we want Merkaba? Do we want to be able to move fully into our emancipation? Stop for a moment. Let me ask you, do you think that in Alpha Centauri or in the Pleiades or in any of the Arcturians or the Andromedans, do you think these people use coins and exchange uh, money? No, they don't. They're way advanced from that nonsense. They are building and designing and engineering. They are elevating consciousness and art and beauty and science, constantly working for the great good of themselves because they realize they are a fractal of the whole. So there is no enclosure, there is no containment, there is no ownership, there is no proprietorship, there is no need to define things with labels and borders and trademarks. So that is essentially part of the evolutionary uh, upgrading that we are required now to step into. But we have to recognize truth as individuals first, that all enclosures are false. All ownership is false. It's all part of the trial of separation and the unresolved 
a super conscious that we carry, mm-hmm. a super consciousness that is our birthright. Mm-hmm. That's the path that humanity is um, going through right now. We're going through that in the forest, mm-hmm. trying to understand that. That's what we're doing. I guess yes. it will not take uh, six months. It will not take, I don't know, uh, one year. I think it'll take a little bit more. <laughs> but on the note of, of free energy, um, I, I want to get a little, just, and this is my, will be my last question. I think uh, uh, te- uh, te- uh, Tesla's patents on free energy were, um, were I think, stolen uh, by the U.S., uh, I, Apparently, uh, I want to know what you think about Donald Trump, but apparently Trump, I feel he's on the leading edge of uh, uh, new ideas and new things that will uh, avoid people from being enslaved. That's what I feel when I look at Donald Trump. Uh, and apparently, uh, I think he wants to um, get all these inventions out. That's only my um, perception. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about Donald Trump? <laughs> Well, I, I've been an outspoken advocate and supporter of um, what he represents uh, since 2016, 2017. I've been very outspoken uh, in, in advocating what I've actually been seeing with my own eyes. So I studied the executive orders for four years. I understand everything he did uh, was uh, to disempower the satanic elements um, and to um, help to create a reset, essentially, a planetary reset in many ways. So he caused more destructivity and damage to the parent corporation in four years than anyone has managed in 400 years. So in that context, the man is an avatar and uh, the utility of angelic forces. Is he, uh, um, in and of himself, is he an enlightened man? I doubt it very much. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, but I think that he has a tremendous genius and a tremendous uh, a human connection. Um, so uh, essentially his um, connection to Tesla and to the Tesla archive and to the Tesla um, uh, technology um, suite, I think is connected to his uncle and uh, his uncle having, um, having inherited uh, the Tesla library essentially. So there's definitely a straight line between Donald Trump and Nikola Tesla. I imagine Trump has known since he was a teenager about breakthrough technology, innovation, and so on. But he's also a very smart man, and he understands the status quo, and he understands that it has to be a soft demolition of the status quo. It not happen overnight. You cannot just arrest Hillary Clinton, arrest these generational sociopaths. It has to be a controlled demolition, and that's a painful process. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very much uh, in agreement with you that uh, Trump and the circle that he represents uh, are definitely, and I know because I'm in touch with some of them, are directly involved in um, seeking redemption and seeking to create a soft demolition of the old Atlantean mm. model of reality. I don't mm. think it will take that long. Unlike you, I don't think it's a long process. I think it's incredibly a short process suggest that within the next cycle of seven years, eight years, certainly within nine years, uh, we will see no governments left on Earth. Uh, they will all have been brought into their corporate dissolution at that time. And I think that we will have essentially broken um, the old model entirely and be very much moving into the ascensionist paradigm, which I, at this stage I believe is, is coming within our lifetime, uh, certainly by the year 2046. Uh, with the Micronova event that we can expect at that time, um, as long as we have a Tesla shield, again, um, which is connected to the morphogenesis and connected to the collective awakening of humanity. So the human being is very connected to the science of evolution. The building blocks of ascension are taking place in the cellular microbial DNA of our bodies. And the imposition of satanic forces the Public Health Administration and the Bill Gates and this vaccination programming and the depletion of oxygen through masking and self-isolationing and quarantining. All of this is an attempt by the satanic forces to disrupt the natural um, evolutionary uh, revelation of the human regenesis, which is connected to morphogenetic interconnectedness, not self-isolation, but actually connection. And... Uh, 
the opposite of quarantining, the opposite of government, the opposite of masking, the opposite of intervention through vaccination. So that's the war that is playing out in the in the human being right now. It's a galactic war. Mm-hmm. We're social beings. We cannot be confined. We want to be with people. I mean, I don't think people understand that. No, no, we have a big pandemic. <laughs> mm. um, I see it's you, it's I more than social. It is. It's it's universal. I mean, it's a we are quantum, uh, multidimensional, hyperdimensional, um, supernatural beings. Uh, once. Once we have managed to awaken fully within the dream spell, eradicated the synthetic molecules and the spells and the bonds from our reality, then we move into supernature, the codons reconnect, and uh, we we enter naturally into that uh, supernatural state. And that is certainly happening as we speak. Great. I see you as a light worker. And I know there's a lot of light workers uh, communicating. We uh, we need uh, people like you. Uh, that that do more of this work. Uh, is, uh, could you define yourself as a light worker? Or is that too uh, narrow? No, for you? <laughs> no. I, it it sounds like a it sounds like a nice a nice uh, thing to say. And so I thank you for the kindness. Uh, but no, I don't uh, particularly see that. Um, I'm 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 just as happy um, bearing witness to the to the dark uh, light and to see how those forces are playing out. Um, I'm certainly on the side of the enlightenment of uh, humankind. I'm certainly on that side of the line, uh, but I, I'm, I'm very interested in, in remembering what it is to be a realized, fully realized human being. And I would be satisfied with being a fully realized human being. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you're pretty close, you're pretty close. <laughs> Sasha Stone, directly from Bali, Indonesia. Uh, thank you for the time that you've uh, uh, given me today. It was excellent. Um, I will uh, uh, send you the link to this uh, this video. My followers are mostly uh, uh, French from Quebec and from France and other parts of the world that speak French. So let's see if they like this interview. <laughs> we'll try to put some subtitles under there. But it was a great pleasure. I think you're, you're doing a very important work on your side. Uh, and um, your contribution is uh, super appreciated. Thank you for taking the time today. Um, I will share this with my twin brother. We're on a mission uh, together, me and him, to um, help uh, people wake up, if that's possible uh, at all. Um, (laughs) It's kind of working, Uh, but uh, we're also on a quest to um, uh, find uh, other forms of... um, uh, governance, I guess, if people still want to be governed. Uh, but um, I think we'll. I think I. I think there'll be a, a, a new type of global government governance, which will focus more on people being free, being in touch with nature, being self-realized, not all the bullshit that we're seeing right now, of control. Um, it's maybe a brand new idea. Maybe it's not even called governance. I don't know. Uh, but it's definitely trying to unite uh, the people of the world uh, to uh, connect with each other in a more maybe natural uh, f- fashion, I guess. But uh, uh, maybe our paths have not crossed uh, for nothing. <laughs> thank you very much for your interview. Wonderful. Well, thank thank you for your time, uh, Daniel, and my, my love to you, you and your brother. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye bye. God bless you. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye.